par was a 5, and you got a 7, and you want, then you know that you went 2 over par. So your average par at that point would be 2. If it was another 5, and you got an 8, okay, that's going to change it, what your average par is. So this is how we're going to, so the average par at this point, what you're calculating, is you've got plus 2 and plus 3, which is 5, divided by 2, because we're talking about two figures here, uh, your average par is 2.5 over, or your 2.5 over par on average. And we know that's right because there's this 2, plus 2 here, and plus 3 here, and the average of 2 and 3 is 2.5. So that's what we're going to figure here in average par. So one way to calculate the average is to add your score up, subtract it from the par, and then divide it by the holes. There's an easier method though, and that's what we're going to do for this calculation sake. We're just going to go equals this box, the average of this, close parentheses, minus the average of this. Oops, I forgot to write it in. And it equals the same thing. So that's what that box read. That's that's the way we're going to do it. Honestly, I can't remember why I, I decided to do it that way. But looking at the master, that's what I have. And if you don't have anything in the in the data at all, so if I delete this, then it's going to show up as an error message because you can't divide by zero, and that's what it's trying to do. An average works as you add all of the sum or add all of the figures together and you divide it by the total number of figures. But since the total number of figures is zero, it's coming up as an error because you can't divide by zero. And that's okay. We're going to leave it that way. And so average putts is talking about the average number of putts that you hit in a hole. So let's say that you, okay, that's on hole one you hit two putts, on hole two you hit three putts, on hole three you hit two putts. This is separate from your score. So if here you scored a seven, that does not mean that you scored a seven and plus two, that, so your score was actually nine. No, this is including the two. So that would mean with a seven, that you mean you hit five on the approach and then two once you were on the green. So this num this putt box is separate from your score box. So you total up here with 45. So you hit 45 putts on your day of 18 holes. So this is just going to be an average of that. Average. And then you just click and drag all the cells. And voila. So this person hit average of 2.5 putts per hole. So in other words, you can look at that data at the end of the day and say, okay, on average I hit 2.5 putts on a hole. I need to improve. Holes are built that you do two putts per green. You want this number to be two or less. It's okay if it's one, you know, you don't want it to be zero because that's basically not doable. That means you're hitting in to the hole from either chipping it or from the fairway and if you're doing that then you probably don't need to be spending time creating this the spreadsheet. So that's your average putts. So we only have one more thing to really do before we can plug this back into our live sheet. And you're going to have to just trust me on this. This is going to be a little weird, but follow me. So in this box, again these aren't linked, so this is this box is separate. We're going to put a function in here. So press equals, and this is going to be another count function. It's the same thing we used over here for the holes. And we're just going to count the putt cells. So B12 through S12. Okay, And that's going to show 18 because we have 18 cells that have figures in them. What I want you to do is I want you to shrink this text down to 5 and I want you to make it disappear. Change it to the same font color as you formatted in that cell and just make it go away. The reason I'm having you do that is because it doesn't matter to you. As the, as the golfer, 
that statistic is irrelevant. It doesn't matter how many holes you put it on. The data is already there. To have a figure about that would be redundant. However, through spending a couple weeks on this spreadsheet, uh, we need that figure in order to calculate averages on the final page. So that's going to sit there. Just ignore it. Now that it's there, you don't need it. So this is it. This is your golf report for a single day. So I've deleted all the data out of it, and now what we're going to do is we're going to copy, and we're going to, or yeah, we're going to select and we're going to copy it. We're not going to cut it. We're not going to go control X. We're just going to go control C because this is your master, and you're going to want to have this available. So now you're going to come over here to the live again, and you're just going to press paste. Let's just go ahead and enter some data here because I want you to be able to see what's happening. So I'm going to enter some data from one of my golf games, and don't judge me. Oh, really quick, coming back to this screen coming back to master. We want this date, we want it to be short date. Just to make sure what we, that's doing what we want it to. I'm going to come down here. I want it to just display the figures just like that. So when I come back here and I enter the data, it doesn't look like that. I want it to look like that. That takes up less space. Oh, and one more thing I want to do is I'm going to just select the nine column and I'm gonna put a border on the right just like that so that as you're looking at it you know you can see the front nine from the back nine more easily two more things I forgot you forgot to have you do um, let's just enter in a bunch of data here oops that's not what I wanted to do. okay you see up here how it comes up with all these decimals we only want this carried out to two decimals so I'm just gonna come up here and shrink it down like that you're going to want you're going to need to do the same thing here. So, let's do Okay. And then You see how that goes that right there. So, I'm going to get rid of that. So, I'm just bring it down to two decimals. And again, the reason you want to do that here on the master is so that you don't have to edit these figures every time over here on your live sheet. So you do them here so that when you copy and paste them, all of the formatting is already ready for you. Okay, so now I've entered all of my data. The holes are figuring correctly, the par is figuring correctly, my score is figuring, and putts and averages, those are, fi those are figuring correctly. If you look back at this one, what we're really here for is all of our totals. So I'm going to go to E and F, and we're just going to do holes, and this is going to this box is going to be a function. So just so you can follow what's going on, I'm just going to highlight the cell yellow. I'm going to have that be right aligned and I'm actually going to add a colon in there because that's just what I want. G is par and I'll highlight that. And so I'm going to do that with the rest of the data across. Okay, down here I'm going to highlight H and I and I'm going to merge those ones together just because the text is a little bit longer. So we want average plus or minus par in there. So I've filled all those boxes in, and everything that's yellow will not stay yellow. I'll make it. I'll turn it back to black later. Just want you to be able to see what's going on. I also made all of the boxes that are yellow uh, left aligned so that they'll line up nicely right next to the columns. Okay. So here's where things get tricky, and this is where I spent most of my time trying to figure out how to do what I wanted it to do. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fill in all of these yellow boxes with functions that's going to give us all of this nice data up here. Now these functions can be a little tricky. In the holes, we're going to calculate here is the total number of holes that you've played, or rather the total number of holes that you have record of playing in this program. Remember how I told you to make all the cells in here, uh, the text, white? Well, I'm going to have you change the ones that are yellow back to black so that we can see what's going on. You don't have to have the yellow if you don't want to, but I'm going to do it just so you can see what's going on. So this cell here, holes, is going to equal the total number of holes that you've ever played. So this plus right there plus right there, however many of these you have. But because you will be continuing to add these as you go down the spreadsheet, because you'll be copying this formula and pasting it right here underneath it. So we can't just have this equal this plus this, you know, plus this, because I want you to be able to add cells infinitely. 
and still and not have to change this formula up here. And that's where we discover a lovely a lovely formula called sum if. So that's going to equal sum if. Now what that's going to do is it's going to add things into this function if it meets a certain criteria. Right now it's asking for range. What range are we working within? This is the data that we want to add. And so we're going to work within cells A through C. A colon C. Now the reason I typed that in manually is because if I just try to select those three columns, it selects everything. Cells A through T because up here at the top we have those cells merged. So we don't want to do that. We're just going to do A through C. A colon C. And now you'll see that it's just highlighting with that blue line, the blue box, A through C. That's the range, and now it's asking for the criteria. The criteria is holes. We're looking for data that is related to holes. And we need to put that in quotations so that, it's no, so that it knows it's looking for text. And now it's looking for the sum range, and the sum range is column C, but again, we can't type just column C, so we want CC, so just column C close parentheses, total. Now it's, so it equals 18. Now the beauty, and that's what we want. Now the beauty of this again, is if I come back here, and I copy this, and I paste it, like that, it automatically updates it. 18 plus 10 is 28. If I were to do another like that, it now registers here as 11 holes, 29 holes. So that's the type of functions we're going to be doing from here on out. So up here, par, this is just the total par, the total of all of these. What is your total par that you've played um, in your data? So this is going to be another sum if function. Equals sum if, parentheses, the range is column A. We're going to be using, it's going to be looking for the letter or the word par but that's going to be in A, in the column A. So AA, -A, the criteria is par, P-A-R, in quotations. And now the range, and so it's asking again, the range of where the sum is going to come from, the sum range, where is the data that we're adding here, is actually in column T. This is the data we want. We could also have it be B through S, but we're just going to have it be T because it's easier that way. So T colon T, close parentheses par sitting at 72. Again, if we add another box down here, and let's just let's just make sure that we did it right. Copy, paste, par was 61 plus 72 is 133. Okay, for your real score, that is again going to be a sum if function totaling these. Sum if, oops, we didn't type the equals. Sum if, the range is again AA. The criteria within that range is quotation score space R space control Z. Now you remember when over here when we put this in we had we put in that extra space so that it wouldn't give us that funky symbol. We have to put in that extra space here as well. So let me show you what happens if we don't. Sum range. The sum range is Again, T. We're just looking for data that corresponds with score in column T. So it won't add all of these numbers in. It'll just add this one. So TT, close parentheses, read zero. It's saying that there's nothing there. The problem is, if we come up here, again, because remember, if we look in here, there is a sp there is an extra space here. You just can't see it because it's a space. But if you come in right here and press space, and then Control-Z to get rid of the symbol, now it reads 109. It, when you anything within those quotations has to be exactly accurate to the text that's in the corresponding cell. Number of putts is going to be the same thing. Equals sum if or the range is AA. The word we're worrying about is putts, and the sum range is TT. There it is. Handicap is a sum if function as well. Sum if the range that we're working in, however, is going to be I column I. We're looking for the word handicap, oh. and then the sum range is column J. 
so it shows zero. If we had a handicap of 10, it would read 10. Your handicap score, you can do that one of two ways. You can have it simply equal your real score minus your handicap, or you can have it be another sum if function, and that's what I'm going to do. Equals sum if. So M is the range, column M. The criteria is score. And then the range is column N, or the sum range is column N. That does not differ there. But if I put in a handicap of 10, that'll differ there. They won't change that at all because that's what changed. So that's how I did it. Now your average slope is a function, but it's not a sum if function. It's an average if function. And there is one of those. Average if, right there. And so it's going to be, but the rest of it's the same. The range, we're looking for slope. So is P. The criteria is the word slope. Don't forget the colon. The average range, instead of the sum range, the average range is column Q. Now that reads 119. Now when we bring over this other or additional data, you notice that didn't change because this is reading zero technically by having no data in it. It doesn't, it reads zero. But when taking, and that's why I like the average function, when taking the average, it doesn't incorporate empty cells into the average. If you were to put a zero here, then you would see how that changes. But it doesn't if we leave it blank, and that's what we want. So if you, but if you put in another cell, and let's say this course has a slope of 120, then it will change it to the appropriate average. So it's not a sum, it's an average. This average, plus or minus par, is figuring the same thing as this. What is your average in relation to par? Do you usually hit two over? Are you a double bogey golfer? Are you a quadruple bogey golfer? Are you a birdie golfer? And that's what this is gonna tell you on average. And this is going to be an easy one, because all we want to do is take the score minus the par divided by the number of holes. And then we reduce the down to two decimals, and there you go. That's your average par. And because you only have one set of data, you know that's correct, because that's what's reading here. Once you introduce multiple data, then that number will change. But you know that you've got your function correct because those two data are reading the exact same. But I didn't. There we go. Put it. No! Leave me alone! <laughs>